I like that. I like that. I like. But you know what? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, which means there's some stuff that I forgot. But there's some things I never shall forget. It's where he bought me from. It's the, it's the difference I know that he's made in my life. And I know what I used to be and what I am right now. So I those things I shall never forget. Bless be God. You know what? I don't need to preach. We just need to have communion and go It has been so rich and so wonderful up to this point. I don't. I, I. I just hate to think that I might bring it down. But I just thank God for the opportunity to serve. I thank God for the opportunity to share His Word, and I just pray that you get something out of it. Let us go. Back to the scripture of um, Second Ephesians or Ephesians, so, sorry, ch second chapter, out of verse seven, and this is just so powerful. No, nope. is that it? Yeah. No, 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 no. I want to go to verse ten. For we are God's workmanship, yeah. created in our mother oh we were created in Christ Jesus to be cute to do good works which God has prepared in advance for us to do so do you know that there was a purpose there was a plan you are not an accident It didn't matter what plan your mom and dad had. God has a plan for us from the beginning. And out of that word, if I could just give you a thought, people of purpose. People of purpose. I'm still I'm still working on 2 Ephesians 2 to 10. I finished with that one. But that's the foundation for people of purpose. Amen. Father God, we come before you humbly giving you thanks for the opportunity to stand and share your word. That, not that I'm worthy of it, oh God. Not that even outside of you that I have the ability to do so. But as your handmaiden, as your servant, I come bow before you, oh God, asking you to empty me of me and pour into me those things which are necessary to convey the truth out of this word that you've given today. Father God, because it, we're not accidents, there has been a plan and a purpose for us from the beginning. Help us to be people of purpose, to walk it out, oh God, so that we can glorify, honor, and please you with all that we say and do. And Father, we give you permission work to work on us until Jesus comes. And we give you thanks for the opportunity. Amen, 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 and amen. People of purpose. Right. When uh, Brother Deloney started Sunday school this morning, he was so excited. He stated that we were created with a purpose according to the plan of God. Because in everything in Genesis, he said, let there be. And there was sun, night, day, stars, moon, plants, animals, whatever. But when he came to man, the, the, the creation for whom he made all of the lights and stars and fruits and vegetables for, he said, let us make let us take a little bit of time and he got down in the dust of the earth and with his hands fashioned something that resembled them not him did y'all get that <laughs> resembled them who is the them i'm talking about amen because they were in the garden together in creation and he said um, that he would make man in their image and in his likeness. But there was a purpose. For what? For good works. And out of this thought, people of purpose, I, there are three things that I want us to embrace as we become people of purpose. For the Christian education, it was focused on purpose. And then we had the power of purpose. 
That was real good. But the theme for this for this quadrennium for the four years in the AM Zion Church is refocusing. This year is refocus on purpose. And then it's retooling our ministries and restructuring third year something and then I forgot number four. But this year is refocusing our purpose. Well, there's, there's a reason why we're here. Amen. And we know that if we were yet, if we are still alive, that God has a he has a reason. He don't do stuff haphazardly. He just choose you and turn your lights off and leave somebody on. No. There's purpose. There's reasons that he leaves us here. And the three ideas that we must embrace as people of purpose um, is, we're going to go through number one, that God's purpose lasts. When people tell me, oh, Pastor, God told me to be a part of Amazing Grace, and he led me here. And then a month later, he said, y'all said I'm leaving because, I, you know, I prayed and God told me, no, to go over to Grove Methodist. Because I don't want nobody in Toledo to see this and say I'm talking about them. God don't change his mind. Because the Bible tells me he is the same yesterday, today, and oh, so when God has purpose and God has plan, he don't change his mind. So I have to look at you. And I said, well, it was just a month ago when you told me the Lord led you this way. Right. How can he change your mind after a month? Right. Oh, no, change his mind because you're, you're blaming everything on God. Right. God's purpose lasts because he, he don't change. When he takes clay and he makes a cup and he puts that cup and fires it in the oven, that cup does not become a plate. That cup is a cup until it's broken and moistened again and back to clay so he can make something else. Amen. He, and I asked Anna, she said, well, Grandma, what's your, what's your sermon about? I said, it's about purpose. I said, can you eat soup with a fork? She looked at me like I had another head. And she said, well, no. I said, why can't you eat soup with a fork? She said, because you won't get nothing. I said, no. I said, and it's even harder to take a spoon and a knife and cut a piece of steak. Because that's not the purpose for which it was designed. And whatever we were designed to be, to do, to accomplish, that lasts until we get it done. Amen? Amen. And in Proverbs 19.21, it says, Many are the plans of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that prevails. It is the purpose of the Lord that wins, that succeeds, that ends up happening. Because I tell you, I started out like in third grade and I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be an astronaut so bad. So you know Star Trek and and um and Star Wars and and Galactica and all of, I just went because I'm, I'm going to be an astronaut. It was just I thought was my purpose. And then I said, no, I'm going to be an usher at church. No, then I'm going to be a choir director. But many are the plans of a man. I never said I wanted to preach. Never, th no, I don't want to go into ministry. I will teach Sunday school twice a week, three times a week. Lord, just don't ask me to do that. Many are the plans of a man, but it is the purpose of God that prevails. There's a multitude of things that a man plans. We, we decide what we want to do, what we decide to do, what we attempt to do, what we may or may not do. Or accomplished. But the eternal purpose of God doesn't change. That means it doesn't shift. It And it shall come to pass. That's what I like about God. Yes. Kicking, yes. screaming, he will bring yes. you into purpose. Right. Or he'll bring you to the point where you see it and understand it and then say, oh, you missed your chance. That's right. mm -hmm. But it is the plan of God that wins out for us. And you know what? A lot of us know that God has calling on our life, has purpose, and we just go the other way. We do everything we can not to be around people of God because they'll see it or they'll prophesy or they'll have a word of knowledge on us and we can't handle that. So we'll always hang out in the bars and fall out and so we would 
drunk skunk on Sunday morning so we can't come to church so nobody can speak a word. But it is still the plan of God that does not change. Amen. Because if you look at our lives here on earth, there is a fog. It's like um, a fog in the morning, a vapor and a mist. By noontime, usually it's what? It's gone. That's our life here. But he doesn't call us just for here. Because there's an eternity that we have to last through. Amen. Amen. Right. So um, our life for this thing is just to get us trained. Just to get us ready for the for everything that we need to do. Amen. God's purpose for you is, des is, is, des is designated as our DNA is knitted into our mother's womb. Yes, he said because before you were knitted in your mother's womb. What? I knew you. I had a plan for you. And then I called you. And then what? I ordained you to bring forth fruit. There's something that he has designed us to do. Now, your mom and dad said you were a oops. No. That is not God's plan. God said, oh, no, I knew you were coming. And I knew you were going to be a little strong-willed. And I knew you were not going to fall out with everybody because you you did your own thing your own way. But I'm going to use that. Because I'm calling you for this. And I'm calling you for that purpose. Because I need somebody who will worship me even in the difficult times. I need somebody who will stand up in the middle of wrong and say, y'all need to quit. Because I'm going to use everything that I put in you to glorify, honor, and please me when I need to call it out of you. And some of you, have you ever said you did something, you go, where in the world did that come from? We are people of purpose whether we want to acknowledge it or not. Some of us have the, have, have the DNA of healing. Where whenever somebody's sick in the family, they call us. Or they need a problem worked out and they call you to figure it out. Or they, they, they need somebody with this kind of skill or something and they always call you. And do you ever wonder, well, why are they always bothering me with this thing? Why does everybody come to me with finance problems, Sister Allison? Because she's worked it out. And she has demonstrated that, that that's one of God's calling. Either, either to her family or to those that she's sent to. Amen. Amen. Because Sister Allison can squeeze a penny. She will make the dime, the, the, is the eagle on the dime? Holler. <laughs> She'll make it work. Amen. Honey, Lincoln will get off that penny and say, what the what? <laughs> what are we going to do today? Amen. Amen. Because that's, he's knitted into our DNA those skills and you just don't understand why always somebody brings that kind of thing to you. Because he has knitted it into your DNA when you were being formed and your atoms being split and the cells being divided in the womb. Before you were anything but a little mass, God saw a purpose and called you and ordained you. Because it's on purpose. Know that God doesn't do stuff because you're a puppet and because he just want to see you jump, he'll go Zzz. No, he does it for purpose because he's a, he has a plan for you. But sometimes we drag our feet and God has to fulfill the purpose because I told you it's the, it's, it is the purpose of God that prevails. Sometimes it's not going to, because you keep saying no and you keep running away, that it has to be filled in the next generation. Because David was so anointed and so you know, appointed by God. He came, he went from sheep to, to, to king. But because he had this, this thing about him, about killing, he killed Uriah. Mm -hmm. And then he killed, his son tried to have him killed. But because of the blood in his, on his hands in his household, he could not fulfill the call of God for the temple. That he had to wait until his son was born and be grown to understand and to accept that calling. Don't let the will of God or the purpose of God have to be fulfilled through somebody you're going to have. Why don't you just go ahead and do it while you can do it? Right. 
Come on, we're people of purpose now. And we have possessed the power of the purpose. So there's, who can stand the goodness if God is for us? All right. Even people on the job. They may work your last nerve, but you know I'm a woman of purpose. Right. I'm not called here by circumstance. I'm not here by accident. Right. Right. This is where God called me to, anointed me, yeah. and appointed me to bring forth some fruit. Yeah. Right. Oh, you may not like me in this position, but guess what? Until God calls me to somewhere different, this is where I'm going to be. Right. Can we get that attitude? And I'm not saying being smug in what we know and who we know. I'm talking about being confident in the purpose of God in our life. Yeah. Right. Oh, you might have to talk. Being, you have to, have to might accept being talked about. Okay, you can talk about me because they talked about Jesus. Oh, you may go behind my back and tell the supervisor this, this, and this. And that's okay because I know that's how the devil works. But guess what? I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer in Christ. He said, I am the head and not the tail. And if you get upset when I walk in the room, just know it's my anointing. Oh, don't hate the player, honey. Help, hate the game. Hello, somebody. Preach. We're the winners. I was created for purpose. It's not me, and I know it's not me. It's the anointing on me. It's the God at work. Um, what's the name? No, it must be the God in me. Mary, 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 Mary said it's the God in me. That's what you're hating on. Hello. Hey. I don't mind. If you have to take it out on me, it's still okay because it must be the God in me. Amen. So we so it is the God, it's God's purpose that will last and last and last because He created us not to cave and give up and quit. He created us to last for eternity, and the stuff He wants us to do, called us to do, made us to do, is going to last. Because guess what? If this is just practice, He said you will. He said I made you fishers of men. No, He said I made you like. Oh God. I made you ruler over fruit things. No. I made you overseer of a few things, but come up, I will make you rule over men. I, and, and I'm sorry, I can't. Traveling yesterday has just got me tired. But anyway, so, so there's work to do in the hereafter. You know what I'm saying? He's going to need some rulers of hundreds, some ruler of thousands. He said, I will make you ruler over many. This is only practice down here, y'all. We got to forever to contend with. And if we can't take one co-worker, we folding up because one person say that they, that they don't like us, how are we going to be overseer over many? Come on, forever. That's not just, you know, 12-month job. That's forever. Come on. This is just practice to get it right. So it's the purpose of God that lasts. Number two, everyone is born with a purpose. Every single person has a purpose. Even when you don't know what it is, you have a purpose. And it's up to us to find out what it is. In Exodus 19, 16, it reads, I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. And if you look in Exodus 19, he is talking about Pharaoh. This is going to be a mm moment. He said, um, Pharaoh thought he was large and in charge. He thought he was in control. But it was God who placed him in the position of leader over Egypt. It was God who hardened his heart so that he would not become compassionate toward the request of Moses. Because God had a purpose for everyone and has a purpose for everyone, including those who resist him. Do you know when God said that he created everything, he created good and he created evil? Because if he didn't create it, it wouldn't be here. That is something to think about, okay? So he has a purpose for everyone. And God will get the glory in every situation, in every circumstance, no matter 
Because God is the giver of purpose in every life, whether we live for him or not. Uh-oh. Whether we live for God or not, God will get the glory. He said, some things are done just so that my power can be displayed and seen in other people or by other people. So those people that come against you, maybe he created them just so you start praying. Just so you can stop counting yourself as all that, the chip and the dip at the party. <laughs> Sometimes maybe you just need a reality check that you know there's something that you ain't perfect in, that you just ain't right in. Get it, get it. God has a purpose for everyone and everything. Um, I used to play in the, in, the gra in the grass at my grandmother's house in North Carolina when we didn't wear shoes. Oh. You know, we used to wear flip-flops on the highway going to the store, and they'd melt on that asphalt. Sometimes you had to come on barefooted because it would just melt off your feet. And then there was these sand spurs. Y'all don't know what sand spurs are. Either. And they would, you know, if you step in the wrong part of the grass, they would stick in your feet. It just reminded you, you know, you should take care of those flip-flops when you get a new pair. You should, you know, you wear shoes when you have them. Sometimes you just didn't have no shoes, Christopher. You know what I'm saying? No red suede and no gold suede, no navy blue or royal blue. Sometimes you just had to go out in your bare feet. But when you had some shoes, it remind, those sand spurs would remind you they were a purpose. They had a per. I still don't know except to get in my shoes and in my feet and on my pants. I don't know what God, he, but he had a reason to make them. Yeah. It reminded me that if I had shoes, I need to go put them on. Right. And if I didn't have any, I'd be grateful for the next pair that my mother and father were able to get me. But there's a purpose. There's a reason for everything. And sometimes those people were created and put in the position right next to you to remind you to pray. Some were just reminding you that this is where you could be without the glory of God in your life. That the, the, the bum on the street, sometimes if you ride by and you see him, you go, oh, God, have mercy. And there before your grace, it could be me. And then you ride back and they're gone. Where did they go? Where did they disappear? Some things are just reminded so that God can show forth his grace, his mercy, and his power in our life. We don't always have to understand it, agree with it. But God has a purpose for everything and everyone. Right. Amen? Amen? The third thing, and I'm almost through, God fulfills his purpose for believers. He will do that. Uh -huh. Philippians 2, um, 13 says, For it is God who works in you the will and the to do in order to fulfill his good purpose. Because it is God who works in you. Do your work. I love that about God. This scripture should encourage us to do our best and our utmost. Because we know that our labor is not what? In vain in the Lord. God is ready to assist us in our faithful endeavors. God gives us the will and the to do. Which means he gives us the whole ability. That when we are encompassed by the Spirit of God, that not only does he give us a desire to do his will, but he also gives us the ability to accomplish it. Not every employer gives you that. They give you the authority to go ahead and do your job. You don't do it in 30 days, honey, you out on the street looking for somewhere else. But this is what God does. He gives you the desire to do your best. And then he gives you the ability to do it. Amen. To accomplish it to his glory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Yeah. Oh, no. Is it just me? I just think it is phenomenal. But it's, that, it's God at work in us. Don't think, oh, I got this. I'm going to create the cure for cancer because I got a brain like that. No. Oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to I'm going to cure juvenile diabetes because I just got it going on in the inside. My, no, it's God at work in you. First of all, the will and the ability to do. Now, Chris is swag. I'm sure he go to work hooked and crooked. You know what I'm saying? But it's God at work in him, first of all, so that the kids love him. 
Because I, I know they love how he dressed, because I know I don't have not seen him that work, but I know he got it going on. He go in there right and he go in there tight. And then the boys just like, well, you know, I want to be like Chris. But it's but it's Chris, it's God at work in Chris that doesn't let Chris take that praise and take that that worship and go, yeah, it's, you know, you ought to be like me. No, it's the God in me. Come worship with me. And I'll tell you why I, I sing. i tell you why I can walk this way. I can talk this way. I can be confident because of the God at work on the in my, in, inside of me. I'm sure that's what you do. All right, amen. Because this is what God does. He gives us the whole ability, the desire to please God, and the ability to accomplish it. God's purpose has to be at the forefront of our thinking because we are people of God. And we are people of purpose. It's not about us. And I went to school to become a mechanical engineer. And I worked as a mechanical engineer, engineer for 15 years. But I'm telling you, when I got laid off and walked into a classroom, I realized purpose. I said, oh my gosh, this is what I should be doing. This is where I should have been spending my time and my energy. And I loved it from the day I walked into the day I left. But the day I left, it was time to go. <laughs> God gives you the desire and the will and the ability. Amen. But when it's over, it's over. It's over. <laughs> the reason we should keep um, God's will at the forefront of our thinking because the devil ain't dead and he ain't quit his job. Amen. Amen. He will offer you enticements. <laughs> That when you know that God is calling you to minister to people, he will, he will make a recording contract just appear on your doorstep. He'll have people talking to you about singing down at the 21. Is it 51, the 21? Okay. No, I'm talking about the club. Okay, whatever. He, he, he will, I'm talking about a recording contract. When you know you're supposed to be in ministry and sing to the glory of God, he will have a, a recording contract. Somebody you ain't never heard of say, oh, I have this contract. Let's go cut a record. He will offer you when, you, when, when, he, when he understands God's purpose in your life that there'll be doors of opportunities open that you never saw, never understood, never even aware that they were there. That she can entice you away out of the purpose of God. That if you're, if God is going to use you in research, especially if it's juvenile diabetes or juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, whatever it is, that he can say, oh no, I'll make you a doctor in this hospital and you can head up this clinic and you can do that out of the purpose of God. Giving you money and fame and notoriety but not fulfilling the purpose of God. So when we get the purpose of God is at the forefront of our thinking, then we won't be so enticed, even though it gives us money, even though it gives us notoriety, even when it may be a little better with the cheddar on this side. I know, Christopher. Is this old stuff I'm talking? Okay. <laughs> but it doesn't fit into the purpose of God. So it takes wisdom and it takes patience to wait on God. And for his directives and his instructions. Rather than to live with the consequences and the regrets of our rash decision. It takes wisdom to wait on God. It takes patience to wait on God. But rather than you jump ship, make a rash decision, do you think you can live with the consequences? If you don't know for, for sure, for sure, that it's God leading you down this path, opening this door, then why don't you just wait at the threshold? Why don't you just stop and say, Lord, if it's you, if it's you, give me a sign. If it's you, give me peace. If it's you. It looked green on the other side. I'm going to go through. No. Living with the consequences of our decisions is far worse than having the patience to wait on God. We are people of purpose. And that's what we have to be about now. Because the time for playing 
is over. Jesus is on his way back. And if you can't tell, just read the newspaper. The, the Bible says when there's rumors of wars. It ain't no rumor anymore because war has come to the doorstep. War has come to our window. War, I mean, war against the races is in our town. We don't have to read about Ferguson. And we don't have to read about Chicago or, 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 or South Carolina. It's here. If you don't believe that it is the time that God is going to come back, then I don't know what else to show you except for you to read the Bible. So at the forefront of our thinking, because we are people of purpose, should be the purpose of God. Because it is God at work in us. So if God is at work in us, we need to do our work because what? He's working. And we can't often live with the ramifications of our own decisions. We are powerful people of purpose, but we must come to grips with one. God's purpose lasts forever. He don't change his mind like the wind blows. Amen? And that everyone was born with a purpose, good and bad, which we must align ourselves with that, in order that it glorifies God. And three, that God fulfills his purpose for believers. We are spoons, we are forks, we are knives, we are plates, saucers, bowls, pots, pans, or baking dishes. Whatever we are created to be. When we do the thing that we were created to do, we fulfill the purpose yeah. of God yeah. in our life. Yeah. Simple message, but I pray that you got yeah. something out of it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.